Hey, what's up? Uh, welcome to Adventures of Gagging and Friends. Uh, we are playing not Call of Cthulhu tonight. We're playing The Witch is Dead. Uh, sadly, if you were looking at the Discord today, we are going to put Call of Cthulhu on uh, on a little bit of hiatus uh, as we sort of set out set out some schedules and things like that. And we still wanted to play some tonight, so we're going to play this. Uh, it's a silly little one shot from Rowan Rook and Deckard, who we are all big fans of. Uh, and it's uh, it's a literally a one page RPG and um, and it's absolutely ridiculous. It might take two hours. It might take 45 minutes. It I don't know. We're going to find out and kind of go from there uh, has not been a great deal of prep by really any of us in terms of this. So it's just going to be a lot of like riffing and silliness. So hopefully that's cool with you. If it's not, well, too bad, because uh, that's what we're doing anyway. Yeah, I class has started today. I'm kind of tired. I got, I got an attitude, got a little bit of an attitude. All right. So, oh no, that's the wrong buttons. I just hit all the wrong buttons there. Okay, so this game, I'll have everyone introduce their characters in a second, but I'm just going to read you as written in the PDF document uh, what this game is about. It's called The Witch is Dead, an RPG about murder. Once upon a time, there was a kind and wise and beautiful witch who lived in the forest with her familiars. Say hi, familiars. They're all familiars. Hello. And her life... Hi, familiars. What? <sighs> God dang it, Jeremy. And her life was peaceful <laughs> and happy until a fucking witch hunter broke into her cottage and dragged her out and fucking murdered her. And now she's dead. But if you get revenge and kill him and bring his eyes to her corpse within a week, she'll come back to life. Or so you've heard. Even if it doesn't work, at least he's dead. So uh, everyone you see on the screen, except for myself, are playing cute little woodland animals, uh, witches familiars who are going to get revenge uh, on their, uh, you know, for their, for their, for their dead witch. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick little intro of, uh, of who everyone's playing. And, uh, and yeah, we'll go from there. So Jeremy, what cute woodland animal are you playing? Hi, I'm Yudas. I'm a very good dog. I can make fire. I love my witch very much. I will murder whoever murdered her. Excellent. Well done. Uh, if you are unfamiliar with Yidis, Yidis, uh on again, off again, here and there in the Holler campaign, especially in the one shots in the very beginning when uh, when we were before we actually started the, the blight uh, uh, to me, uh, Blessed Beauty. Uh, Adam, who are you playing? <laughs> Adam is waving with a finger. Hello. My name's Splat. Splat? Okay. Yeah. Splat. I didn't know that. And I like to sit on the witch's finger, but I hear the witch ain't around no more. We're getting to that in a sec, but yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Okay. Split. Yeah, but we're going to go get it ice. All right. Get and bring it back. I mean, you're certainly going to try. You're going to give the old cute woodland animal try. Yeah. Yeah. Because of that fucking prick. <laughs> exactly. But, you know, we're going to, I'm going to go away now. Okay. See you, Adam. Or, or no, see you, Splat. Uh, Chuck, who are you playing? Ames Bladis. I'm a goat. It's the second owner I lost here recently. And that shit can't stand. Yeah, it's true. Yeah. Spoiler alert, right, Chuck. Jeez, man. Some people haven't oh, caught up yet. God damn. <laughs> uh, I can speak the words of man. Okay. Fantastic. Yep. So definitely a radical departure from his previous owner. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, but I also heard that words are for nerds. So it's kind of weird that Bledis is just betraying Double D. Yeah. Well, you that. know, fuck him. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And then finally, Melissa, who are you playing? Uh, cranky. I am Nigel. <laughs> Uh, so if you've seen any of our black sword hack, uh, Nigel was an owl automaton, a uh, little helper uh, that is not at all loyal and will go uh, hang out with anyone that might uh, be nice to him. Uh, but in this case, uh, Nigel is going to avenge uh, the dead witch with his unseen hand. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we'll see. You're going to certainly try. All right. So this game, there are four stats. OK, there's clever. That's for interacting with humans. There's fierce, which is basically, I don't know, scaring people, strength stuff, that kind of thing. Sly, which is sort of sneaking, hiding, that kind of thing. And there's quick, uh, which is 
evading, climbing, agility type stuff. All right, so each one of them have a specific stat. It's a D10 game. They're going to roll a D10, and if they have a bonus in one of those stats, they will add that bonus, and then we'll see if they are successful at what they were supposed to accomplish. Uh, everything that humans do is very difficult for an, a, a cute little wooden animal, uh, so there will be various uh, difficulties. Uh, and also, all of them have a magic, uh, excuse me, a magical spell that their witch taught them before she was brutally murdered. Uh, and so each of them has a spell that they could potentially cast uh, along the way. All right. So let's say we begin. Uh, here we are. Scene open. We see we hear a creak of a, of a tree. The wind uh, kind of blowing through the, the leaves. Uh, we look up and we see the creek is because they're hanging from a, a, a bough from a branch. Uh, we see the body of your witch. Your, your, who, what's the witch's name? Do we have a name for the witch? Sabrina. Sabrina? Okay. Sabrina. All right. Yes. Yes. Definitely. Okay. We see Sabrina. She, is she a young, old? I know, you know, Sabrina is a teenager, but we, we're going to do a young witch, old witch. What do we think? I think Sabrina adopted us when she was young. Okay. But. We had a good long life together. And you've been there. You guys have been together for in some of your cases, you know, a good week or two because uh, uh, time flies for, for Splat. So <laughs> yeah. there you are, all of you, after having woken up in the morning, feeling very good about the day, but you wander out and you can see hanging from this tree is your beautiful friend, Sabrina. And you hear this creak in creek and you look at the bow you look at the branch the branch looks like it's about to to break but just when it looks like the 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 tree is going to break the, the the limb itself is going to is going to snap because you see her weight kind of dragging it down you watch as she just kind of rips apart and you see her legs just flop to the ground and this hideous absurd mess of blood how are you all responding to this let's start there Freaking. Blind rage. Now, uh, you look around, we'll say, and you can see that there's there's no one here. There's no, there's nothing to like, like, how did this happen? You're not really sure. You didn't hear any sounds. You didn't hear any fighting, screaming, whatever. But you just see her up there. You look on the ground and you can, you do see that there is like a spear or, or something that had been kind of stabbed in her to help her kind of, kind of hang from that branch. Uh, but other than that, all you really see is this this woodland cottage. You're out and away from the village. You're nowhere near it, uh, but you are just out in the out in the forest, all by yourself. Slightly overcast morning. Um, what do you guys want to do? How, how, how what do you guys want to? How do you want to handle this? Nigel would like to try to use unseen hand to kind of get the rest of her down. Okay, and sort of be a little bit uh, respectful with that. Okay, so uh, so you go ahead, you cast your spell, uh, and does, unseen hand. Obviously, we don't see it, but we we do watch the, the noose from where whoever murdered Sabrina uh, begin to unravel a bit, and we see after a moment, the rest of her just flops to the ground in this horrific explosion of gore, and so now you have on the ground the entirety of Sabrina split in half. Blood everywhere, and you have uh, you have brought her down. Splat will kind of scurry over on top of her and start trying to put her back together with some with some webbing. Okay, uh, he doesn't expect it to work. Oh but, yeah, of course. Yeah. Just for fun, let's do this. Uh, go ahead and roll. Uh, let's roll like a clever, maybe. Uh, give mm -hmm. us a clever test. Uh, D ten. D ten. If you have a if you have a stat if you have numbers and clever go ahead and add it to your roll. Uh, I'm gonna make this basic. Twelve. Okay. Wow, that's a hell of a roll. Uh, so <laughs> you are able to with your webbing, and so everyone watches this splat in this like frenzy of action and movement, uh, just just spurn, you know, just spooling, spooling all these different webs, and you are able to basically web her legs the bottom half of her body to the top half of her body. It she's now one again, but there's this giant, you know, there's this giant belt of, of spider web that's keeping her whole. Uh, it does not bring her back to life. However, Splat. <laughs> uh, I fixed her. 
I I know her smell real good, but do I smell any other smells that aren't her smell? Uh sure. Uh go ahead and let's say uh roll yeah, roll another clever. Um uh, just give it a yeah, it's just a six. Just give, make it a simple test. I think I have one clever. I do. So I get a whopping seven. Okay. You smell uh aqua velvet. Uh, just wafting on the air, this this pungent odor. Uh, it's it's probably a scent you've smelled before. Um, whenever that smell has begun wafting from somewhere else in the woods, Sabrina has always panicked and had all of you rush and hide. Uh, so you remember the smell, and it's certainly lingering on the air. And as you're racking your brain. Uh, there, there, Yidus, you, you realize that it's likely the smell of this one hunter guy who comes around every now and then, kind of bangs on her door, asks her all sorts of questions, accuses her of, you know, devilry and, and, and witchcraft, which the second part for sure. Uh, but do you remember his name, Jeremy? Do you remember his name? This guy? Um, dog on. Okay. <laughs> okay oh, all right <laughs> okay so, so yeah you think you're pretty sure it's this guy who's who's he's from a dog family which doesn't make sense because they don't actually have any dogs but there's always dogs in their name and you're pretty sure he he was here it's just the, the, the one the one guy the, the hunter that um that that didn't like didn't like her. Uh, but he, this, he was here. I, I, I smell him. Well, we, should, well, we should go get him. We should go get him. Yeah. Oh. Let's get I'm on I'm going that. to eat his face. Okay. All right. So you're going to try to follow this scent. Does anybody else want to do anything more in the cottage or around the body first before you start tracking this scent through the woods and towards where it might take you? I suppose um, we could go in and just see if anything else is a, a miss. That is very smart. Okay. Uh, so you go back inside there for a moment there, Nigel. Uh, how big is the cottage? Is it is it extraordinarily large? Is it like a small log cabin? Is it something kind of fairy tale like with weird proportions and such? Uh, the latter, of course. Okay, so it's like a weird proportioned. All right, so sometimes from the outside, it looks like it's a kind of a tiny cottage, but then when you go inside, it's surprisingly almost magically spacious, much larger than you would expect it. There's a roaring fire, we'll say, that's going on as it's been a little chill outside, but inside it's quite warm. Uh, it smells very nice in here. You don't smell aqua velvet inside, though, Edis, uh, so it doesn't look like you ever made it inside the cottage itself uh but but you were looking for something amiss nigel is there anything in particular you're looking for like is there something that you're curious about yeah i wanted to see if there was anything that sabrina was up to like right before this happened like dragged out of bed or something like that okay uh why don't you roll a let's call it yeah let's do just another clever test is fine so you're just kind of observing around. Just trying to see what you can find. Uh, this one, simple is all you need, but the higher you roll, so if you roll, the higher you roll, the more you might get. I am quite clever. I got a seven. Okay. Uh, you doesn't look like she was dragged out of bed. You don't notice anything in the cottage that suggests that she was uh, like a, kind of attacked or accosted inside the house. But you do notice that at her desk... Uh, there appears to be, well, quite a lot of paperwork uh, that she has kind of piled up. And you can tell that she seems to have been working on some kind of concoction or spell. You're not entirely sure. Like, you guys know a little bit of magic, but you never quite understand everything that Sabrina is doing because she's just so brilliant. And you notice that there is, on the wall, uh, there is like this hand-drawn picture of uh, of a man uh, called dog gone and you can see that she has taken two daggers and just stabbed them right into his eyes boy yita she really didn't like this dude 
No, she didn't. He smelled really bad and he talked with a really mean voice. Wonder. Bletus, you can speak human. Does that mean you can read human? Yes. <laughs> maybe, maybe she was trying to do a spell to uh, take out this dragon fella. Uh, okay, so if you if you go and kind of look through her things, uh, if you go look through her papers, we'll say that maybe you are able to to read some of it. Um, but yeah, from what you can tell, she was looking possibly to concoct something. Uh, doesn't look like she was anywhere close to finishing but she was trying to work out some sort of hex. This guy, you notice, uh, according to her notes, she writes, uh, was a real fucking asshole. And uh, like it's, it's in big, blocky, all cap letters. Uh, so it does look like she was trying to do something to him. Yep. Says it right here. It's the word she says I can't use on people. Anyway, well, it's obviously a spell. Seem to have our number one suspect. Yep. I wonder if the eyeball dagger thingies got to mean something. Like she's trying to pin it down. Well, maybe that was uh, on her bucket list. And so if it's on a bucket list, we should go to it for. That's a good point. If she wanted eyeballs, I'm going to fetch eyeballs. Should we take those daggers with us? We could use those daggers yes. to kill yeah. <laughs> Splat, Splat jumps on the back of one and is like trying to move it. <laughs> Splat, roll a fierce test. Uh, <laughs> we're going to make this for you near impossible. Uh, so it's a 10. You need. Yes. <laughs> A spider with a force of zero. I got a five. fierce of zero. Okay. Uh, go ahead and add one to your danger. You uh, you try and try, and at one point, you nearly cut yourself on the part of the <laughs> blade that is uh, sticking out, and you can feel the blade touch one of your legs. Your leg almost gets severed, but you but you manage to kind of contort yourself in a way to avoid it. But no, you are unable to pull, pull the blades out of there. <sighs> Very well. Um Bugger yeah, off. I got it. And uh, as I'll le- I'll jump off and leave some silk on it so someone else can pull it down. Okay. Uh, I'll just hop up on the desk. Oh yeah. Uh, Bleed is this, this is much this is I think pretty basic for you. Go ahead and roll a fierce test. Uh, give us a, a seven or higher and you should be good. Uh that's a twelve. Uh that's that's too high. So oh, you shit. As you pull the dagger, the whole wall comes falling down. The cottage collapses and you all die. Okay. Thanks for joining us, everybody. We'll yep. see you uh, oh, next time. Thank you. <laughs> that was fun. That was good. <laughs> we'll say you are able to pull both of these daggers out of the wall. No problem. All right. Set them down. Okay. I guess so. One of us carries one in her mouth. Mm-hmm. 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 And then, Nigel, you carry the other one with your feet when you fly. Okay. okay. And then Nigel will pull out unseen hand, and you just see this like floating knife. <laughs> Nigel. Oh, that's that's even. I like that more. Okay. That's so uh, creepy. Uh, <laughs> a little floating knife next to the owl. <laughs> what do you want me to do? Oh goodness. You could. You could. You could we weave a holster for the knife. <laughs> what? <laughs> Splat could Splat could weave with the web, weave a holster that we could put over Yetus's back and have a knife on one side and a knife on the other. Oh nice. Ooh. Very well. Um can even put a lanyard on it so that when you when you throw if you throw it or you let let it go, it won't go too far. All right, roll a. Let's do it a quick this time as you're stitching mm-hmm. up this thing really fast, trying to get this working. Um, this would be challenging to get something that would fit. So we'll say an eight. You want an eight Nine. or higher? Okay, you are able to get a rudimentary uh, sc- 
scabbard, I guess, for this dagger that Yidus can put over his back. And so now, and it's within range of his mouth because it's over his shoulder. <laughs> so he'll be able to pull it off with his head. That's so ridiculous. <laughs> this is, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got Starting off nice. strong. I know we've got an owl with a floating dagger next to it. We've got uh we've got a we've got a dog with a uh with a dagger on its back. And so latest you and me, what, what are we gonna do? I'm gonna hit him with my head. Well, then what am I gonna do? You're gonna bite him on the nose, maybe inside the ear. I could do that. Yeah. In a day or two, you won't be able to hear anything out of that, here. Aren't you poisonous? Yes. I mean, in a day or two, he won't be able to do anything else either. But... I didn't realize What's he was your slow spell, acting. Splat? What's the spell that you can do? Uh, and, like, I'll raise up my two little arms and weave them back and forth like that and then i'll start conjuring light okay suddenly it gets very <laughs> bright in here oh that's it when it's time for the stab and you'll sneak up and you'll make his his eyeballs bright can't see that's true i am quite small and then we do the stab and, and the the head hitting you mm -hmm. must give me a ride I'll get you right. I jump up the legs and jump up okay. on top of them. Yeah. Feel sure. free to make your little nest my horns. <laughs> and I I weave a little nest that says that's some pig on it. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> or that's some goat. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So we've got are we all prepared for your journey? Okay. We are. Good to go. So Yidus, you lead them back outside, you get the whiff of aqua velvet, and you plunge into the woods surrounding the cottage. Now, there is a danger that the witch has warned you all about when it comes to the cottage. She always tells you, and it's not just the villagers, the villagers are their own danger, but there's something else in the woods. And it's a story she regularly used to tell you, uh, Sabrina would say that, be careful. Don't wander too far. And if you did, this might get you. What was the big danger that she told you to be careful of? Because it was it was out there in the woods. And if you wander too far, it might get you. What, what, what was that thing? I mean, I got an answer. Yeah. But if anyone else wants a chance to answer it, I'll let you. The Go horse. Forth. You travel 100 yards through dense forest thickets bramble it's a it's a long walk for well it's not that long another yards or so and as you're pushing through this vegetation there it is the horse it's massive it oh, is shit. it is bigger than all of you combined it it has these almost glowing red eyes and you can see as it's standing there it's reaching its big stupid face up into what looks like an apple tree and it's biting and taking an apple down from the tree and it's in one big gulp it swallows it but as it looks around you get the sense that it knows something's around it starts to sniff <laughs> that's that's my horse sound God. beautiful <laughs> what do you guys want to do run if we don't get away quick enough it's going to eat her knees <laughs> well, oh, oh no, Bleedus quick. is running. I guess I have to run too. Everybody, roll a quick. See if you can get. It. Actually, I would say Splat doesn't have to because Splat's riding, I'm just hanging on. Yeah, like blowing in the wind. If you're just running away as this thing is sniffing, sniffing, and then it turns and it looks and it sees you, and you just see it rear back on its two back hoof things and it gets really mad and then it's about to chase after you guys and you see it come come barreling down the hill where this apple tree was chasing after you all uh this is going to be challenging this is going to be an eight or higher i rolled a yes. seven under eight okay 
Uh, and because of my plus one. Okay. So the rest of you, those that are terrestrial, you know, like the ground level familiars, you bolt immediately and you go running back. And maybe it's just the fact that there's all this bramble and stuff that you start running through. You feel little tiny cuts here and there, but nothing that actually hurts you too much. But then you, you hear the sound of like the flapping of wings that don't quite get going. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you don't. Cause owls are quiet. We learned this. Uh, you don't hear it, but instead you hear a very angry or very pain crikey as Nigel, <laughs> you are bit in the ass, uh, by this horse. And you all watch as like, as you look back through the brush, as it seems as though Nigel is struggling to get free from this horse. How do you all want to handle this? And uh, Nigel, increase your danger by one. Okay. Well, I think I know how to make the horse open its mouth, and that's to make it scream in pain. So I'm going to produce fire right on its behind. Okay. I'm going to turn up all the demon dogs that I once ate. <laughs> and just bellow forth flame. <laughs> Are you trying to do this from like a stealthy snipe position or are you just bravely going in at this point? Just going in. Okay. It's, by, if, it's actually got Nigel in its mouth. Okay. So you rush in all of the demon dogs that Yetus has gummed in his long and illustrious career suddenly come bursting forth, not physically, but abstractly, metaphorically mm -hmm. represented by this purple flame that just comes right out of Yetus's mouth right underneath his gums and it goes directly at this this guy's behind go ahead and let's say roll a uh give me a quick uh to see okay. if you can hit him before he's able to respond fair enough so d10 got me a five plus one six okay six you scorch him slightly but you but you do see that he's despite his size is very nimble and he's able to quickly rebound his hind legs go wild and up in the air. He stomps back down. The earth shakes from when it hits the ground. But you do see that there is this there's this chunk of his his fur that is suddenly scorched and is and there's a little little, you know, plume of smoke coming up from it. You have hurt it. Uh, his butthole is very leathery and flame resistant. Uh, what are the rest of you doing? Well, even though I know since Nigel's been bitten, she's now doomed to turn into a horse herself. I will still try and save her. Okay. And I will go up and finish what we just started by doing a flying head leap <laughs> right at that same burn mark on the horse's behind. This sounds... Is there any way I can assist with this? Uh, well, what are you doing? You tell me. Um, as we're uh, launching towards the horse... I wish to conjure light in my webbing and shoot it at their at the horse's eyes. Okay, you give me a quick test to see if you can time it right, and then let's have Belitis. That's a fierce test. Uh, I would say for for Splat, we'll just make it simple. It's a six. You know how to cast a spell. It's just about timing it. Yeah. For Belitis, we're gonna make it challenging because this is a mm. big ass horse. Damn horse. Just wait. 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 Just wait. Just wait. I'm on fire today. I rolled a two. <laughs> it's an 11. Well, even though the light goes off just a little too late, uh, like you just <laughs> mistime it and it's just like this, this burst of light happens behind the horse, like a few feet away and no one really sees it at the same time. It is quite beautiful and uh, sparkly. <laughs> uh, however, Bleedus does, you said a 12? 11. 11. You smash you gotta... into the burnt ass of this horse with mm. your hook with like with your you know your goat horns and you hear it whinny suddenly out in pain and i'm gonna say nigel what are you doing as this horse now seems to be in quite quite a lot of pain having been burnt and then just rammed in the ass by a goat so important and question cool um is nigel still in the horse's mouth uh, I'll tell you, if you want to try to squirm free, you can certainly do that. You can try, let's say, a quick test maybe to evade. Okay. And we'll say that's what you can try to do while they've uh, assaulted the horse. 
I got a six. Is that enough? Uh, I'll say, yeah, it's simple. It's good enough. So because of all the distractions, the burning, the hit with the horns, the light that's 10 feet away that just suddenly emerged, the horse let's let's go or at least the the grip on your wing uh comes uh, comes looser and you're able to tear yourself free uh and nigel is able to flap up in a way the horse is not defeated but you can see that they are injured damaged they're winning around a bit they're kind of lowering their head you can see those glowing eyes uh maybe it's anger maybe it's maybe it's fear uh, maybe they're just really high right now. I don't know. But whatever it is, they're very, very ready to charge at you guys. Do you stay and fight or do you guys try to flee? Make like a fart. Get out of here. Leetus says they'll eat my knees. I like my knees. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we'll say all of you turn and you run and you run and you run. You hear the sounds of clapping and hooves behind. Uh, and at a certain point, that fades as you just kind of run off in the vague direction of where you think the village might be. And at a certain point, the horse doesn't seem to be following. Any of you who actually have a danger, you can go ahead and reduce it by one since you've ran away from your problems. A little while later, not too too long, we'll say that Nigel, your wing is, is hurting a bit, but it's it'll it's not going to be permanent. Uh, but every time you go to, to, to sort of get your wings going and try to lift up into the air, you do feel a little bit of a smart. At a certain point, you start hearing the sounds of um, of wheels on cobblestone. And you look out and you can see that there is a group of humans uh, that are traveling through the woods on what you think is probably the main road in and out of the village. And Beyond them, in the distance, you can see the walls uh, of the village itself and the gate where lingering around there have to be a dozen or more mixtures of humans. Maybe they're guards, maybe they're workers, who knows. But that gate where this, this wagon's heading, there's quite a few people there. What would you like to do? We're sneaking this, around it, right? Maybe. There's getting to be a lot of different smells. It's harder to find the man. Hmm. Well, uh, Bledis, you can you can speak, right? I can. Can you just ask him where the Ooh, the man ooh, that smells like lives? Aquavelva? Are there I mean, any? Sorry. When you when you douse yourself with it like that, everybody's got to know where that one is. Hmm. It, are there any stables or anything like that nearby? Some place where maybe we could find a big horse blanket. You look around, you don't see any, but you have heard from Sabrina that there are places inside the town where they actually stable up horses from time to time, and the horses that they stable up or not like the asshole horse from the woods. They're, they're much more respectful, broken. I don't you might say. It. Yeah. Maybe before you talk to somebody like, um, you can stand on my back and then be, I'll, I'll put myself up against the wall a little bit to be a little bit taller. And then you get up on my shoulders and then you will be at almost human height when you talk. I like it. Camouflage yourselves as a, you should get Arson. a coat. Get a exactly. Coat. It'd be We're, like the three cobalts in the coat thing. I can I can grab a coat. You should know like it. a tavern you know or something that might have like a coat rack near the door. I mean, you're not in the village yet. You're out by the road. You can see in the distance, like a couple hundred yards away, maybe there's the gate that goes into the village and you see a wagon going past with people in it. So you're not near a tavern currently. I could go ask the horse if maybe he lets the the man ride him if he knows who the man is. Something about something about him. Mm. Oh, that's fine. Okay. We could. I'm gonna go see a uh, horse about a man. Go see a horse about a man. Yes. Watch your knees. You got too many of them. They'll come for you. Mm. I says, so Sply is going to try 
to sneak up to the horse that's pulling the wagon or is that what I'm, did I understand that right? Oh, I thought it was in a stable. You guys aren't new to stables inside the no. town and you guys aren't inside oh, okay. that village yet. All right, then. Nope. First thing we have to do is get inside the village. Oh, we could just get in the wagon. Maybe we just go jump up on in the, the, wagon. the wagon. Okay. Uh, I want sly from everybody. Give me a sly roll from everybody. Let's make this challenging. Uh, oh, no. Yeah. As suddenly trotting out from the forest uh, mm. is a dog, uh, a goat, a bird, and uh, a spider trying to sneak into a moving wagon. How do we do? I got a cowboy hat. Oh, the oh. On this dice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You got the deadline size? Nice. Yeah. Uh, how else did everyone do? Seven. Seven. Creature danger. Somehow the smallest creature uh, has, has the biggest trouble. How did... Five. Okay, both of you, both of you take a point of danger. As somehow, how did how did Nigel do? By the way, ten. So as somehow Nigel and Yetus managed to hop up or fly up into the back of this very large cart. You can see there's like crates and barrels and things. Looks like farmers bringing something. You're not really sure, but you do manage to hop up. But just as it looks like Bleedus is trying to hop up with splat on his uh, in his usual spot on his shoulders or on his on his horns. Uh, that's when one of these humans turns around and it's like, "What the fuck you doing? Get out of here, you stupid goat!" And then you hear, Ch -ch -ch, and they're pointing what some sort of metal barrel in your direction. Uh, there. Oh shit! I forgot to turn it off. As I uh, <laughs> turn off my lights. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, you, there is a, you guys would know, a gun uh, pointed yeah. at this crazy goat that's trying to hop onto the back of this wagon. You guys want to do? Oh, it's, it's, you know, I'm antithetical with sneaking, so I want to back out and just try and walk underneath the carriage. Okay. So you, you hop back down uh, and... The wagon keeps going, and are you trying to get under? If you're trying to sneak again, like you failed to sneak, but we'll say you can yeah. kind of back away. Once you once you get down and start backing away, you can see that whoever it was that was kind of holding the gun puts it down. Like that, there's the dumbest goat or I've ever seen in my life. And I, who who is it that can speak human? I can. So you hear this? That there, everyone else just hears uh, like you know uh, peanuts, wah, wah. Uh, peanuts wah, teachers. Wah, wah, wah. <laughs> oh yeah. Uh, but you hear that there is the dumbest goat. I've never seen a goat hitchhiker before. What? God, those creatures. They're just, they are the absolute worst. They are just vermin. I, I should have shot them. You know, you should have shot them. The other one says, you really should. You know, you still can. It's right there. I'm like, eh, I don't know. It's kind of far away. Well, I mean, we could stop and you can go get it. I don't know if I really want to do it, but boy, I sure could go for some goat. Probably would be kind of tasty. And you just hear this conversation as you're backing away there, Bleedus. Not a fan of that. <laughs> Awfully insulting to me. Just trying to hitch a ride. I'm going to summon forth my human speaking voice. <laughs> okay. <laughs> we'll say so you're that like I, 15 feet away or so at this point he's backed away what do you do I'm going to insult their mother <laughs> what do you say <laughs> hey I say uh, your, your mama doesn't stink <laughs> what <laughs> your mama she does stink he's stuck with double D's voice that's the only voice he knows <laughs> I mean as far as he knows she does stink <laughs> You just see this, the faces of these two stupid farmers just somehow get dumber as they look out like, did that goat just talk? I think you said your mama stank. What? My mama don't stink. And then you see like one of them hops down and they're like, oh, I'm going to give this one a nice big, big clubbing. And you see they're like undoing what looks like a like some kind of cudgel at their waist. And they're just like, yeah, come here, go. Come here. T tell me about my mama again. Watch what's going to happen to you. And they start slowly uh, approaching, uh, approaching Bleedus. What would Bleedus like to do? Hey, hey, 
First thing I got to yell out, I got to get out of double D for a second. <laughs> so I can talk like normal. Second thing I'm going to do is summon in my, my human speaking voice again. Okay. You might have a stick, I should know. I done smell it yesterday. And then I'll run away. <laughs> Go ahead and roll quick. Is he trying to run away? <laughs> uh, that is quick two. That is an eight. Yeah, that'll do. You run off into the uh into the woods a bit and this guy goes mm. chasing after you and it's like my mom doesn't stink you didn't smell her yet get back here you damn talking goat talking goats are even worse than regular goats and he's just running off and so now you've got one guy with the gun still in the wagon kind of like dumbfounded at the fact that there was a goat that could talk and then this other guy with a cudgel is chasing after Bleedus and Splat who have now run off into the forest what next I, I think we should just stay put because that's so much of a distraction. I think once the back, they're just going to go inside. You know how to drive a wagon, Nigel? Uh, my hand sure could. Okay. I don't like that he pointed a gun at our friend. And I have one way I normally tend to these problems. I shoot flame underneath his <laughs> rear end. <laughs> 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 oh goodness all right so we you just mm, get it all ready get the gums winding up mm, mm, conjuring some of the devil devil dog bile and you just blow out another purple fire to try to hit him as he's sitting in the seat of the wagon he doesn't notice you. You guys passed your stealth no problem and all of a sudden a burst of purple flame comes out <laughs> you're like ah yeah. And he, uh, he he hops out of the wagon, stumbles down to the ground. My ass! My ass! And he turns around and he sees in the wagon from behind, there's, there's, there's Yetus. And you can see the flames are still kind of coming out of his mouth a little bit, a little smoke going up. He's like, I got me a dragon in the wagon. There's a dragon in the wagon. And he's, uh, Where? he's Where? he starts firing fire, <laughs> fire, and he starts shooting the gun up into the wagon itself. I um I need both Nigel and Yetis to roll uh to roll what are those what are those skills called? Uh quick to see if you can dodge out of the way of this gunfire. He's on the ground and panicked, so we won't make it super difficult. We'll just say it's challenging at eight as he tries no. to fire back That's at you. A five. Uh, Seven plus one makes it. Okay, uh, Nigel, increase your danger. Uh, maybe it's the wing uh, that does doesn't unfurl quite as fast as you like, but you get clipped by the sound of this gunshot. Uh, you manage to duck, however, Yetus, and you can see a explosion of the wood on the wagon frame uh, where most of the shot hit. Uh, but Nigel, you are unfortunately like hit by a little bit of it. Let's cut then to the uh to the woods where we've got old uh we've got bleedus and we've got splat who are running through the woods and you hear the sound of a man following yelling at you all because you were making fun of his mother uh and then as you're running you hear the sounds of gunfire uh maybe you know what a gunfire is or maybe maybe not i don't know but it sounds bad what did you do it's scary uh i'm gonna say hey for that bush over there um that and like i'm waiting i'm gonna try and see if there's a bush but like like some foliage between two trees sure yeah no problem and mm -hmm. then um as soon as we pass through it i'm gonna jump off of him towards the bottom of the tree like maybe knee height sure and then jump to the other tree uh stringing some webs behind uh, i see what some, you're trying to do uh yeah. roll quick let's see if you can get this done fast enough uh let's see right. let's see yeah, let's make it. Uh, let's make it make it challenging again. So give me an eight to get it done before he, before he reaches you. Yes, eleven. Okay, yeah, you do. <laughs> you you as as Bleedus is running, you leap off quickly, spin your your web, and you leap to the other tree, and you create this tiny little trip line. And he's like, he doesn't even really see you, to be honest, as he's chasing after Bleedus. Like, get back here, you talking goat. Oh, you ain't gonna be talking when I'm doing. Ah! 
ah! And then he trips, <laughs> uh, falls on the ground. His head kind of smashes into the ground. Head comes up covered in dirt at this point. He's like spitting some leaves and such out of his mouth. Like, what in the damn what? And he looks back and he sees that his uh, there's like all this webbing that's all over the ground. What do the two of you want to do? So actually, Bleedus, what do you want to do? As that was a uh, that was splat. What does Bleedus want to do? Well, I mean, if he's on the ground, and then we make like a tree. So I'll go and scoop up splat and run out of the woods. Hopefully, I'm going to lose him. Okay. Uh, since he's on the ground, since his cudgel went kind of flying, uh, we'll say you're able to pick him up and start running back, maybe the direction of the wagon, maybe to kind of meet up with your your uh, your compatriots. We'll cut back to there. Uh, so back by the wagon, gunshot just went off. Uh, Nigel just got clipped slightly. Uh, the man's still on the ground. You're not that far away from the town, but the two of you look up and you can see that the sound of that gunshot was loud enough for the people that was lingering around the gate to hear it. And there's now a handful of folks that are running in your direction. What do you two want to do? Okay. They're going to run to the man shooting the gun. I think we should just see if we can just get the wagon in. So Nigel yes. will kind of take his hand and just kind of float his hand up uh, because the other guy, I think, dropped the reins in order to shoot his gun. Oh, he hopped out of the seat entirely because uh, yeah. of the, the so hop. There's just going to be the invisible hand that's just going to go up and you're going to kind of get the, you know, kind of like uh, kind of snap of the reins a little bit to try to get the horses running faster. Okay. So you get the horses going. Wagon starts moving. You hear the man be like, what are you doing? No, that's my, what, how, why, horse, stop. And then it just rolls over top of him, and he just goes, ah, as the horse and the wagon kind of roll over top. You guys uh, travel maybe a minute before you can see that the folks who are running out uh, from the from the village show up. They are not very large. Uh, they are all dressed in very colorful armor, but each one is maybe three feet tall or so. Uh, very big nose, very big ears. Uh, you have heard them describe as gnomes. Uh, and uh, like, like, okay, easy there, you stupid horse. Come on. Come on. Where's your rider? No, come down here. Okay, where's your rider? And they come up and they grab, uh, they kind of grab the horse and they're trying to slow the horse down. You can tell that they are, uh, they are guards. They're all wearing kind of matching uniforms. And they're like inspecting like, what is... What is happening here? Why? Why? Where, where, where's where's your humans? Where's your people? Come on now, speak, speak, you stupid animal! And you just kind of mumbling in a way at it. Um, what are you guys doing? Hmm. <laughs> we can make fire, and we have an invisible hand. I'm trying to see how we uh, problem solve this. Okay, so when people are mean. I burn them. But if they haven't been mean yet, the next best thing is to make very large eyes at them. Yeah. Oh. You just will just do the biggest <laughs> like basset hound eyes. Roll it. Whimper and kind of point in the direction of the man who get run over. Roll it clever. Roll it clever. Interacting with humans, in this case gnomes, uh, is clever. Roll it clever. Uh, simple. Simple okay. test. So that's a six. Seven? That'll do. Okay. okay. Uh, oh, oh, we got us out. Look, what's the matter? What's the matter? Good boy. You're a good boy. Where's your master? Oh, 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 dear. How? Oh, hi, uh, hi, uh, Henry. Go, go, look at that one. I think his, 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 the dog's master's on the ground. What, what on earth happened? And you see, like, two of the other guards go kind of running after, like, oh, he's dead. I think he's dead. Oh, God. I think the wagon just went clear over top of his face. It's just crushed his skull. Oh, my goodness. Oh, it's okay. It's okay, good boy. Don't worry. We'll find you a, a nice, happy home. And if not, we'll just stab you and gut you, and then we'll eat you. One of the two. It's fine. Okay. Well, I guess we've got ourselves horses and a dog and all these goods now. That a, yeah, what a good day for us. And they start, like, one of them starts climbing up into the wagon, 
and kind of sits down. Okay, off you go. Off you go. And starts leading the wagon inside the village. Meanwhile, at this point, as the wagon's being driven off by one of these gnomish guards, uh, we see from the brush, uh, we can see Bleedus and Splat peek down. You see that there are two of these identically clad gnomes that are inspecting a body on the ground. Uh, and they're screaming out, he's dead, he's dead. And you see the wagon driving off, and you can see that Yidus is uh, being pet by one of the gnomes. What would you two like to do? Looks like he killed their strongest warrior, and now he's their leader. I bet we can just walk on in right now. I say, do you like that? <laughs> do you, do you that? like what they're doing? Do you like what they're doing to Yidus? I mean... Sabrina would pet Jesus and I like that on a regular basis. Huh. She'd do that for you, but you're so tiny. Oh, that's what she was trying to do. I just it could be. Grab it. Next oh. time. Well, I guess there's not a next time. What do you mean? She's dead. That's why we're here, revenge. Oh, because of that piss that motherfucker. Yeah, the one who smells like aqua velva. All right, let's go kill him. Let's go kill him. And I'll just walk on in now that Yedis is their king. Okay, so you just start walking past. Uh, honestly, like, I don't think the gnomes are really going to do anything at all as they're too busy. Oh, you can speak human, so you would be able to hear this. And you would understand mm -hmm. what they're saying. Like, oh, that's a shame. We really needed an extra sacrifice for tonight. But there was a dog in the wagon, so we can probably just use that. And that, that owl, it's not the same when we use the, the animals. It's better if we use the humans. But, you know, it's a Tuesday, so you got to use what you've got. Anyhow, still you should drag them because we need something to eat. So, uh, you know, her worship will definitely want to see that. And so, like, both of the both of the gnomes kind of grab like one leg a piece and they start dragging this guy uh, following the wagon. They don't really pay attention too much to you as you're just sort of trotting along on the ridge. Uh, but you do watch as the wagon goes through the gate and into the village. Uh, so both, both Yidis and Nigel have no trouble getting inside. It's when, when you guys try to, when, when I, I would say when the, the goat and when the, Spider try to get in. There are a couple people mingling about. You just hey, uh, who's there? Who's the goat? This is. Uh, well, there's a goat. There's a freak uh, loose goat. Is this someone's goat? Why is there a goat here? It's a goat. Uh, if no one's gonna claim him, I'm gonna claim him. Uh, no one. No one. Okay. And so oh. they, so like some some gnome, not one of the guards, but just some gnome, kind of wanders up. And he just starts to loop a rope around your neck like a leash. Like, okay, freak out today. Who knew? What a day. What a day. You know, Tuesdays, I usually hate them. I usually gonna, hate them. What are you going to do? I'm going to sneak right up. Or I'm going to move right up to him, like face to face. Mm -hmm. Oh, good. Good little goat. Yeah, okay. Good. He's a friendly guy. Okay. And then what? You don't put that rope around me one more time. I'm going to bite your nose off. Ah, the goat talks. The goat talks. Ah! And then they just punch you in the face. Uh, oh <laughs> shit! What an escalation. <laughs> Go ahead and roll a quick see if you can dodge out of the way of getting punched in the face. Uh, uh, that will be a nine. Uh, that is good enough. As you, it, it, like it, it grazes you, but you leap back, uh, and ever and he's just kind of screaming, talking goat, talking goat, ah! and. Uh, at this point, you can see the crowd. Some of the guards now are now turning attention. Talking down. Oh, the prophecy. The prophecy. And they come charging after you. And they've got these big old pikes and halberds. They're like, get, get it. Get it. If I sacrifice, get it. And they're charging and trying to surround old, uh, old, old Yidus at this, or Bleedus at this point. What are you going to do? I'm, I'm going to try and defuse the situation. <laughs> <laughs> Ma. What? <laughs> okay roll a clever let's see if you can convince them okay five okay 
go ahead and increase your danger. Yep. And then, and like one of them's like, Jim, what are you talking about? It's just bleating. Like, no, no, he talked, he talked, he talked. And then you see stumbling now in through the gates where you're kind of lingering is the guy that you tripped out in the woods and you hit. That's right. I had the same thing. It talks. It talks. Kill it. Kill it. Uh, I'm going to turn to splat. What are you doing? Uh, splat is going to um, try and not be noticed this whole time and sneak onto the one that's freaking out the, the gnome and uh, uh, kind of get into the small little tiny crevices yeah. area, maybe find a nice little unnoticed patch of skin and just, just have a little taste just yeah. to see if I can put it to sleep. Okay. Uh, roll sly. Let's see if you can sneak over there unnoticed and detect it as you crawl across it because he's a little bit busy. We'll make this basic. So we'll make this a seven. Okay. Uh, and then obviously add your, add your sly bonus for it. Yeah. Good thing it was sly. I rolled a four, got a seven. <laughs> okay. You do manage to sneak on over. You crawl up kind of into the neck area and the person's like, they're arguing one of them, you know, one of the guys like, Jim, this guy, this is a, it's just a freaking goat. And he's like, no. And then the other guy comes in. So now there's two people that are pointing at Yidis. There's all these halberd carrying gnomes with the range looks on their faces that are starting to surround Bleedus at this point. And you bite down into the guy's neck and you hear him like, the prophecy's fulfilled. If I sacrifice, if I sacrifice at the stroke of midnight, then we shall live forever. And then just kind of collapses to the ground and everyone else is like, oh, Jim is just such a hypochondriac. I, I just, I don't understand, you know? Um, okay, it's a talking goat. That's a good news. Okay, uh, go ahead, string them up, lead them into, take, take them, take them to the jail, put them in one of the cells. And so... Everyone, all these guys with like halberds and spears and such are kind of slowly approaching uh, Bleedus. And one of them is like, okay, Mr. Mister Devil, I'm just going to loop this right around your neck. Nice and easy. No one wants to hurt you currently. But in a few hours, we're going to disembowel you in the middle of our village in honor of our goddess. So everything's fine. Here we go. What are you doing there, Bleedus? I would try and reason with them. <laughs> God, what are you? <laughs> Stop. Don't do it. Clever. I am not the one sent by your God as a sacrifice. I am a messenger. A warn of er, you. I am here to tell you that the witch hunter has made a pact with the great devil horse in the forest. I don't think I know his witch. The man that smells like aqua velvet. Doggone. He's a, yeah, his name is Doggone. Doggone. He's made a pact with the horse that lives in the forest that eats knees. And unless he is murdered on the sacrificial stones tonight at the stroke of midnight, you will all be turned Roll a into koi fish. Oh, God. Roll a clever. Let's make this difficult. Not impossible. Because you've yep, made some, yep. you've made some good points, but we'll make it we a have nine. Some bits from the audience. Um, what do we want to do with that? Just a reroll, maybe? Just do a reroll. Okay. Yeah. Or like an what advantage. What was the difficulty? Nine. You want to hit a nine? Well, that's that's a six right there. So I'm gonna use some bits then. Sure, sure. Yeah, just use it as a reroll. That's fine. All right, cool. That that helped out quite a bit. That is a three. <laughs> <laughs> I love the I love this reasoning. And so as you're as you're spouting about like doggone uh, about the like the witch hunter having made a pact with like uh, uh, with the, the evil, the evil horse in the woods that eats kneecaps, you can see like some of them, you know, are listening to you. Uh, but at the same time, they're like, OK, crazy cow, we, we get it. We understand. We've got the witch hunter. We've got dog gone in the cell. We're going to sacrifice him too. So everything's fine. But the, you said the, the horse is out there now. Do you, you know where? That would really help. If we could do the triumvirate, the, the trio, sacrificing all three. Well, 
the goddess would be infinitely happy with us. So right now we're two for three, which is pretty good as someone just rings a freaking like rope around your neck at this point. But we really could go for that third one. We want that, you know, the trifecta. We about I can lead you there. Can you could. But it's magic and only a man without eyes can see the place to go for the goat. <sighs> well, that's a shame. So oh. just take your eyes out and I'll lead you there. You can see like, well, he makes a good... Sh- Phil, damn it, he's trying to trick you, you moron. God dang it. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Take I would him. never trick you. Take Ask him. your mother. She knows me. She says I am a kind person. <laughs> and is he's this like, enough time to try and perform another trick? Uh, mm. Well, you can, but at this it's point, he's, he, at this point, he's pretty surrounded, and yeah. I think oh, Bladis okay. is, yeah. is going to get hauled off to jail right. at this I point. Am. But you can, okay. but Splat, please do something. But like, I think he's going to get hauled off to jail at this point. But you do hear them them talking. Yeah, your mother does really like goats, like strangely so. Like this, I would make a great gift. <laughs> Splat, what are you doing? Um, there's there, yeah, there's too many for me to really do anything. So Splat's going to try and um, just hide back on Bleedus so that he can go in there and see what he can do once Bleedus is put away. Okay, all right. So you hop back on. That's we'll say we'll just roll over your your sly from when you uh, when you hopped onto the goblin or not the goblin, okay. the gnome, uh, and then you'll. You'll get on to, to bleed us at this point. So Nigel is going to take uh, the invisible hand. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> the, so bleed us is going to like feel on his back the like writing of like an invisible finger on his back that just says, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> it's quiet. So you feel something on your back, yeah. Yes. I think that I think that Nigel's writing something on my back to give us a message. Oh, spend it. Yeah, I'm What's pretty that? sure. I'm not great at this translation of Al, but I'm pretty sure that it says if we can get one of these gnomes to eat my droppings, we'll get out of here for free. Do you need to go now? Always, I start going. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, ah, oh, come on, gout, no, not now. And then you're like, Phil, it's better he does it here on the street than in the cells. Just let him, just let him go. It's fine, it's fine. And so, Cletus, on I'll, your ear, you just feel this flick on your ear. <laughs> I'll try and fetch a little pebble, like a, you know, like a goat turd, just a tiny little one, and like roll it up and take it with me so that later I can plant it somewhere. All right. So you're going to try to, without being noticed, mm-hmm. climb down, retrieve some of Bledis's goat turd, and then bring mm-hmm. it back up and hide once more on the back of Bledis. Is that right? Yeah. I, re- I realize how ridiculous it sounds, but I'm sticking with the plan. I don't think it sounds any more or less ridiculous than everything else that has thus far happened. So go ahead. Let's do a sly test. Uh, make it basic again. Uh, and Yidus, the whole time you've been getting, you know, yeah, like th- there's a goat that, or there's a, a gnome that's just kind of sitting next to you, that the one that led the wagon inside the village and just petting you like, don't worry, good boy, don't worry. It's uh, It looks like you won't be being sacrificed tonight at all. They found themselves a talking goat, apparently. I know you can't listen to anything I'm saying, and all you hear is... Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> but it's just kind of petting you here and there. But I can see, like, the gathering around Bleedus yeah, and all that sort of stuff. Right? and Bleedus being led away uh, on a rope, stopping for a moment to drop a deuce, and then okay. continuing on. Go ahead. I know that that is the signal, that it is now time <laughs> for fecal offensive. So I am also going to pretend like I need to go, but I'm going to look up with the puppy dog eyes and do the thing that I'm too shy to poop while I'm being looked at and then try to go around a corner to where he can't see me while I poop. Okay. Um, but I have an ulterior motive to doing this. Let's do a clever. Let's see if you can kind of convince him. This is another interact. So, um, okay. And you, okay. Yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Let's make it um, seven basic. I got a 12 uh, on can my I use check. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, okay. Splat, you're able to climb down 
as they're like, oh, go look at it. Go, oh, there we go. Why does Dude. it come out like that? The goats have the strangest systems. What is wrong? It's ins- it's like soft serve, like up and down in the June sun. It re- oh, it rings. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> it doesn't work at first, but then there's like a little bit of turtle heading, and that's <laughs> enough to do the re-roll and get a 10. Okay. Like, what's the matter? Oh, uh, I get it. I understand. You're not a social pooper. No, I'm not either. It's true. Oh, I, I really can't poop if anyone else is in, well, the house. I'll make everyone leave the house before I'll go and poop personally. And, I'm, and if I, if someone comes in to the bathroom while I'm in stall, oh, well, I'll just I'll just clam up right there. Go right ahead. Go right ahead. I'll wait here. You come back when you're ready. And again, all you hear is... <laughs> And really, that's just an excuse. I see the direction that their leading bleed is. I'm going to go. We're now inside the town, right? Yeah, you're in the town. I'll I'll go around to some other building, get to a place where there's not a window looking at me. Mm-hmm. And then I'll light the building on fire. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, give me a... And also drop a deuce because I did force myself to turtle. <laughs> sure, sure. I mean, <laughs> once you start the ball rolling, you know. Uh <laughs> Give us a slide to see if you can do this without or time this without anyone else potentially in the town seeing you. Yeah. Uh, and I'll Six. say um, I probably want something a little bit higher than that. So it's a town. Uh, there's more people walking around. You can use another reroll. I think we have like one or two more. I don't know. Okay. Do. Fine. Six. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you most certainly catch you know, you you're, you you vomit up the purple fire once more, and one of these one of these building catches on fire. But you look off down the street and you see a gnome with a big old curly mustache. Mama Mia! That dog! That dog just blew fire on the corner! Oh my god! Dog! There's a fire breathing dog! And then you and then you hear like people shouting out. And people come charging out of like the woodwork, chasing after uh, Edis at this point. Get him! Get him! Uh, oh no! <laughs> meanwhile, uh, Nigel, what are you up to? Uh, Nigel would be Nigel would have been trying to get out from the wagon without anyone noticing, because goodness knows there's plenty of other things going on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'll- then probably would have been trying to get like on top of a building or something. I think a sly, simple, there's a lot going on. Someone might not notice a bird just popping up and flying up to, a, to yeah, and they might not even make any, any, anything of it. So let's go ahead and a little sly. Uh, it's a two. Okay. Okay. Um, <laughs> you good with that? You good with, good with failing? Increase your danger. Increase your danger. Uh, that's better. That's a 10. Okay. So you come up. Uh, someone looks around like, did you hear that? No, I didn't. Owls are very stealthy. And then they look around. There's no owl and there's an owl now on top of the rooftop. Uh, and you are, you are hidden away. No one's noticed you, but you do have a very clear view of there are, uh, there's some stuff going on. You can see that after dropping a deuce, uh, you can see that Bledis is being led off in the direction of another building. Uh, and you can also see that there is now another building that's on fire and lo and behold, at the base of that building, there is Yidus and you can see that he's being closed in upon from multiple directions and there are all, all these gnomes are shouting something. It just sounds like nonsense to you. Uh, but they are chasing, uh, looks like they're, they're running after poor Yidus. Uh, so with that, is there anything else you wanted to do, Nigel? Uh, yes, I think I would like to fly down and see if I can just, uh take out some of these uh, gnomes that it told my friend. Okay, how would you like to do that? Uh, just bang on with my wings. Just uh, <laughs> smack them upside the head. Alright, uh, let's just make it a fierce test as you're just charging in and trying to talon and smack away at one of these gnomes with his big old curly mustache chasing after uh, chasing after old Yidus. I forgot I'm not that fierce. Hey, that's a tin. Okay. So Yidis, you just finished belching up fire. All of a sudden, this gnome catches you, and from 
from the shadows, from everywhere around. These gnomes start closing in, shouting something, but then swooping down like an angel from the heavens, there is Nigel, and just pecking and taloning away at this at this one gnome who shouted, and he's just like, ah, my eyes, I lost my eyes, I can't see. And then you hear somebody else like a block away, hi, can you come here? You might be able to help us find a, a, a horse out in the out in the woods. Uh, so just come on here, it's fine. Uh, and uh, you have an opening to escape, Edis, if you would like to. Okay, absolutely. And so you just run off in the direction of where Nigel has attacked and given you an opening. And because that opening's there, no role necessary, Nigel, you're able to leap up and off and like the, the, the gnome is oh, on the ground weeping. You hear the sounds of like things flying in the air and there's like little arrows and stuff that are starting to pop up around you. But the two of you are able to kind of escape to deeper in the village somewhere. Meanwhile, uh, at this point, I'm going to go back to Splat. Splat, was there anything you were doing immediately with the, the goat poop? Oh, yeah. Okay, what are All you right. doing? All right. First of all, the plan done. What's the second part of the plan? Who? Which one? Which one? Any of them. Any of them? Any of them. All right. Very well. Ta-ta! <laughs> I will um, uh, just cast a whole bunch of silk in the air so that the wind will catch it mm -hmm. and float me higher up above and I'm going to light it trying to trick one of them into going okay and then just drop my silk covered poo packet in their mouth that's pretty <laughs> amazing <laughs> um, <laughs> let's do that's I mean like let's do a clever maybe want to do okay. clever Sure. <laughs> and so <laughs> as you, you say, this. as you're doing that, uh, <laughs> like they're talking and you can hear this there, bleed is you just hear them like, hey, you say uh, the bakery is on fire. And it's like, hey, what time is it? Oh, I don't know. Five, five thirty. I'm kind of early for today. I thought we weren't going to set that ablaze until seven, eight o'clock. Oh, goodness. I'll tell you, sometimes I'll just think this village has just got just a little bit too much going on. That's honestly. Uh, honestly, I, I think I'm, I'm thinking of moving. I've really no, you're, you're not gonna move. Come on now, you've been here your whole life. And they just kind of just this sort of small talk at this point. How'd you do with the clever roll? Uh, let's see here. It is um, eleven. It's eleven is fantastic. <gasps> Both of them suddenly stop. You feel the rope on your it's neck right. suddenly, <laughs> suddenly tense, and you feel uh, like uh, the rope around your neck uh, tighten a bit, Bletus. But then the, oh, God, it's a sign from the goddess. It's beautiful. What does it smell like shit, though? I don't know. I, I don't know, but it's beautiful. What do you think it means? And so while they're enamored with this, Bletus, what are you doing? Wait. I would like to run. It was trying to escape. Okay. That's what I like to do. Uh, just real quick. Uh, they are extremely, without 11, they are looking at the most glorious, illuminated, floating in the air spider web anyone has ever seen, to be honest. It's it's really like set a record for uh, for brilliance. So let's make this just as simple for you to just run away. I did get a nine. Oh, fantastic. And you bolt away. And because a lot of people have now started chasing after something else on a different side of the village, now that the bakery is on fire and these two guys are really obsessed with this glowing thing, you managed to get away. And you have found yourself in like an alleyway somewhere hidden. I'm going to assume that splat hop back up on, on the, on, like, right? Like you're on the, you're on the back of a, Wait, a bleed assist. My you're question right. will be, did splat's other shoe drop? Yeah, like, did I deliver the package? Uh, so you wanted it to, like, did you wanted it to hit them? Like, because it was a tiny bit yeah. of poo, right? It wasn't it was like a tiny bit of poo. And Bleedus told me the plan was to get him to eat it. Okay. Oh, God. So well, while you, someone's going, like, wow. And, and Splat took him completely oh. seriously. So, oh, oh, I've made the goddess so very unhappy. Oh, God. 
Oh, oh, she's punishing me. Oh, oh, why is she punishing me? Oh. And uh, yeah, you think from that, that definitely. Uh, yeah. Um, so I am being carried on the wind, so I can't really control it very much. So okay. um, if it goes to bleed us, it goes to bleed us. But, you know, if it carries me away and I get away, I'll You're try small and enough and they are distracted enough that I'll say that even though you're on the wind, you can land somewhere where they don't see you. Like, and you're pretty small, so they probably wouldn't observe you unless they're specifically looking for you. And I think right now they have other fish to fry. Really? So let's reset for a second. Uh, right now, there is a bakery that's on fire. Uh, there, You are in a village filled with gnomes who are looking to make a very important sacrifice later. And I do want to reveal, like, when you make the village, you roll twice on a d10 uh, on a chart and I got filled with creepy gnomes and controlled by a creepy cult. So those are the two I rolled. And so that's what we're on. Uh, and you all have heard that they're talking about sacrifice. They want to sacrifice this talking goat. They want to sacrifice this dog that can blow. And they want to sack. Basically, they just want to sacrifice. That's kind of where they're at. And you guys are scattered a bit. Nigel and we'll say Yiddish, you're together. And we'll say then at a certain point, Splat, you can catch up just for ease and the two of you are together. But we'll say the, the four of you in different parts of the village are kind of huddling for a moment in the shadows and the alleyway. You've got a, you've got a breath. Craziness happening and around you. And I'll turn it back over to you. Now that you have a moment, what's next? So, so meta question. Bleedus heard, because Bleedus can speak human, Bleedus heard them say that Doggone is in jail. Uh, Bleedus has heard, yeah, Bleedus heard basically everything. He's the only one who can understand everything that people are saying. The rest of you have no idea unless Bleedus tells you. So Bleedus is the only one what we're, 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 we're saying that kind of understands human speech. Yes. So you all have no idea. But. Wait, I thought we, I thought we accomplished the plan. Well, that was phase one. Phase two is we now have to get to the jail where they were taking us. But I didn't like how they were taking us because it felt icky. They had ropes around your neck. That couldn't have felt good. I agree. I saw the anyway, signal for the fecal offensive. I'm glad you saw it. It's teamwork makes the dream work. It does. But Never let's find it. I guess the first thing we need to do is find out what a jail is and then find out where a jail is and then go into the jail because they are planning on sacrificing doggone tonight at the stroke of midnight, which means that we have to find out what strokes are <laughs> and what midnight is. Right. If we can't find the jail, I have an idea. If we just burn the whole city... The hunter will die, and they don't get to sacrifice him. But we need his eyes. Oh. Yeah, that's, that's right. We got to get his eyes. I've I have found out that if I uh, just fly down, that I can poke their eyes out. But I don't think that gets us what we need. I think I have to poke them and take them. Okay. I mean, okay. you do have a floating dagger that you can just. I tried to tell you with. that it was okay. Did you get my message? Oh, is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, we got your message. Make make that guy eat poop. Uh, we did. We succeeded. I, well, Splat succeeded, Nigel. Uh, well, oh. you we don't know it today. We should we should practice our communication. I don't think that was at all what I was saying, but okay. I uh, so, okay. So they were going some. So eat us. Now that we're inside, can you get a better smell for that aqua velva again? Well, okay, we know they were kind of walking in that direction. So maybe if I walk in that direction, it keeps smelling. I like it. Okay. Uh, so are you guys trying to do this stealthily? Like trying to do it without... Okay, of Probably course. Probably should. Mm. Okay. I'm not going to make a roll for the smell. Like, I think that's just what... Yidus does. He's a hound dog. So we'll just say, you know what the smell is. And you're really just, and with the smell coupled with the direction that Bleedus was being dragged, you might be able to triangul triangulate it. So really the only issue here is whether you're seen. 
Mm -hmm. uh, so let's say everybody roll a sly. There's a lot of distraction going on right now, so let's not make Yay. it too difficult, but I will say let's make it uh, a seven to not be seen at all. So that's basic. Eleven. Five. <laughs> Nine. Three. Okay. Uh, so Got one reroll. Uh, so it's probably not worth using it then since two of them failed. You do manage to get across the village a little bit you skirt around what looks like some sort of town square you see there's a statue of uh of a woman uh that's in the middle made of some kind of you know some kind of some sort of stone you can see there's all sorts of like different like lights and decoration around like they're they're kind of making making it look very pretty uh the sun is coming down and so a lot of the torches and the lanterns and stuff that are hanging create this kind of kind of a beautiful glow and as you're moving down one of these paths, these cobblestone paths, following the smell, you do hear like, "Hi, hey, is that that dog that was shitting fire or something? The dog wasn't shitting fire. It was breathing fire out of its mouth. Quit being ridiculous. And, and they're like, oh, right, it is. Get him. And so you can see across the uh, that uh, sort of town square, there is a couple of these gnomes that are now chasing after you guys as they do catch sight of both Yidus. And then one of them's like, oh, oh, where's the goat to? They're together. We can get them both to. And so now there's a bunch of goats that are chasing after you guys. What would you like to do? A Nigel would like to use his invisible hen to try to trip them. To try to trip them? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. So just, you just want to try to trip one of them? Uh, or do you want to do anything else to try to trip them both, maybe? Or? Uh, sure. If there's like a broom or something that's leaning up that I could just there tip over. There are a can... lot of uh, of these lanterns. There's ropes kind of moving all over the place. There's lanterns hanging down here and there. So you might be able to get your your floating hand to hack one of the, the ropes or something like that. See if you can do that. I like it. All right, uh, let's do a quick, so real quick. Uh, I don't think this is too difficult, so we'll just make it a seven basic. It's a 10. Okay, so as they're coming like, get them, <laughs> and they're chasing after uh, Bleedus and Yidus, uh, and a couple of them have weapons and they're they're charging. There's, they don't notice above, there's this knife that's just floating in the air, sawing away at one of these lantern ropes. And suddenly a whole mess load of lanterns comes sweeping down and 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 it gets them all tangled up and they collapse down to the ground. They're not dead or anything, but they're entangled, giving you guys time to get away if you want. Okay. So uh, we'll say everyone, uh, everyone, uh, you guys are all increasing danger, right? When you fail, go ahead and reduce danger by one as you've managed to to deal with these two that noticed you. And you've gotten again to the other side uh, of the town. You continue to follow the aqua velva smell until you do in fact notice that there is a building that apparently has bars in the windows. Uh, there is uh, small stairs going up to like this front porch. Uh, and you can see that there's a big old star on the front of it. Uh, and uh, then there's some sort of painting. Uh, do you read Bledis? Yeah, totally. Okay. okay. Uh, it says bakery. What would you like to do? All right. I'm assuming you letters. don't you don't read well, so that's why. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly it. Yeah. All right. This, according to the sign, they said jail, but the words up there says buzzard or something. I don't know. But this is it. You can tell by the way it is. So, what's the plan? <gasps> Splat, you should go scout. Yeah, and then I will sneak off to um, get a better look. Okay, I mean, I think as long as the rest of them are hiding in an alley in an alcove somewhere and you sneak across, I think you can do this without a roll being necessary. Uh, do you want to try to go inside? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are yeah, you... like under under a door. Okay. You know, like in between the gap. I'll All right. mine the gap. Okay. All right. You climb and so you start skittering up. There's some. You can hear the sounds of voices on the inside. 
Uh, and when you go inside, you can see that there is a very large desk uh, and there seems to be a very fat gnome uh, with boots up on the desk that have these kind of shiny metal clinking things next to them. Uh, and he's got a big old brown bottle of something that periodically he's, he's taking a swig out of. Uh, and then you see in the small chair in the corner, there's another gnome, uh, very, very skinny with a very, very big nose and a very thin mustache that kind of hangs down. And the two of them are just sitting there and you could just hear them like, <laughs> and then behind them, you notice that there are these two jail cells. One of them has a person in it. Uh, and you can see that it looks very much like the man that was in the drawing that had the, the dagger stabbed into the eyes. He's laying down currently in a bed. The other cell appears to be empty. Hmm. I'll just d d take all that in and back out. Absolutely. So, yeah, you skitter back. Right. And convey everything to everybody. Well, here's the story. There's two of them inside. And, uh, well, actually, there's three, but the third one, he's in his own area. He's got, it's like a room, but it doesn't have four walls. Um, so. Is, is that where the guy is? Yeah. Yeah, this one. Um, now, I could put one to sleep, but I don't think I'll get very far with two of them. So I don't think I could do it on my own. I have an idea. Yes? So, Sabrina's favorite thing to cook for us was peach cobbler. So what if, like, I just yell out through the door, like, hey, they're giving away free peach cobbler way over on the other side of town. And you're all invited to go get some, but you better go now before it all gets given away. And then they'll run out there to go get free peach cobbler, and then we can just go inside and murder this man while he is defenseless and take his eyeballs. That sounds like a good plan A. And then plan B, Splat can do his uh, sleep thing, and Invisible Hand can do the thing with the the metal things in the movie thingy that moves the things, and or, we can do that. It's a weird way to say stab someone, but okay. Yeah. Oh, maybe. no, I meant, like, grab the keys and unlock the... That is I, I knew what you were getting at. <laughs> <laughs> they might only have one go out and another one stay with the bad man. And if they do that, is this one of those, like, buildings where it's, like, completely on the ground or it's kind of, like, up... A little bit it's a little slightly raised. Space. There's like maybe two or three steps to go up to the... Yeah, so there'd be a crawl space. I could hide just slightly under the crawl space, and then just as they walk out, I will cut the tent, I will cut the back of their ankle so they fall down, and then you can butt them in the face. Just pet cemetery style. Just cut the back of their foot. Oh. You know what? Go ahead. Well, if one goes in one stage, mm -hmm. then perhaps I can get the one that doesn't go. Yes. There we go. We have a plan. We have a plan. All right. Give me a few minutes. Get inside. All right. Um, All right. So I'm going to try and get back inside and wait in an area to where it would be easy to easier to um, crawl up someone's pant leg if one person left. Yeah, I'm not going to call for a roll for a spider to get in there, but I will call for a roll at some point to try to get onto them and do it. So we'll yeah. hold off on, on calling a roll there. So for now, I think you can just get in just fine. Uh, but then I think Bleedus is trying to convince them to come out and get some peach cobbler on the other side of the town, which is mm -hmm. going to be a clever test. Now, I'm going to say this. Yeah. If you get a seven, you'll get one of them to go. If you get a 10, you'll get both of them to go. All right. Okay. Oh, yeah. And I, I guess one reroll left. Too. I don't know where you guys are with danger, but we're about 90 minutes in. So keep an eye on your danger. If you ever roll equal or under your danger, bad things are going to happen. So just call it out. All right. Mine just went back down to one. I thought they're too high, but yeah. Uh, well, with. <laughs> <laughs> 
Wait, I mean, as it stands right now, my danger is three. And my role with my clever is three. Okay. Mm-hmm. So you come up. Yeah. You're right kind of next to the door a little bit. And you shout out for Pete, you know, whatever it is you say for Pete's guy. What, what does Bleed shout out? Hey, the dick's in there. You got Pete's guy over there. Over there. And then the rest of you hear, and you watch as the wall next to where Bleedus is standing erupts in red as he gets shot by this this guy covered in dirt (laughs) standing 10 feet away. And you hear hear him say, Bleedus, like, you stupid goat. My (laughs) mother doesn't stink. (laughs) And Bleedus is bleeding out. Uh, on top of uh, on top of the 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 entrance to the to the sheriff's office here, what do the rest of you do as this guy's closing in, getting ready to kill him, getting ready to like to kind of do the the double tap? Uh, I'm gonna say, Bleedus isn't entirely dead yet, but he might be in a moment. What do the he's rest of you do? Mostly dead. Yeah, he's most he's like 75 percent of the way there. What are you guys doing? I'm gonna <laughs> stab a fool. I'm going to pull out my knife and just go crazy on him. <laughs> Okay. All right. Oh, uh, that's a fierce roll. What are you doing there? Uh, what are you doing there, Nigel? Uh, Nigel was just going to dive bomb. Okay. Uh, also a fierce roll. I'll say that if you want to hit this guy, uh, we're going to call it a challenging. I think he does have a okay. gun. Uh, so that is a little alarming. So we'll call it challenging. Fair enough. Dive bomb misses with a four. Okay. Uh, increase your, increase your danger. You swoop down. And he's like, oh, no, you don't. And he fires up. He doesn't hit you, uh, but he maybe clips a feather or two. But he does dodge out of the way. How does how does Yidus do? Eight plus three is 11. <laughs> I'm going to cut him a lot. So he goes, I don't like when he shoots my friend. He's firing at Nigel. And then he, and he as he's moving around, moving around, trying to hit Nigel, the gun lowers down. And he sees a dog chasing after him with a knife in his mouth. And suddenly, like, what the <laughs> fuck just and you see him collapse to the ground, kind of holding this big, that terrible wound in his stomach. He's, I thought, bad dog, bad dog. <laughs> As you continue to stab <laughs> away, <laughs> just headbutt stabbing him. <laughs> and he's just bad dog, bad dog. Moments later, uh, I'll say inside, uh, after the gunshot goes off, immediately outside. Uh, Splat, you watch as the big fat gnome with the with the clinking boots uh, jumps up. Uh, you can see the skinny gnome with this with a uh, slender mustache. They go running out like what? And they start running out, looking down. And they see a goat bleeding out right on their doorstep. They see a dog that is stabbing a fool in the middle of the street, and they're like, the prophecy is. And they start pulling out their guns. Do I see the goat? (laughs) This is the stupidest prophecy. (laughs) Um, Sure, we'll say you do see a little bit of the horn on the ground and like blood leaking out, and they're standing out and they're just like screaming and screaming. What do you want to do? Um, (laughs) something highly illogical. I'm like, (gasps) Bleedus, and I'm going to run to Bleedus and. Feverishly try and patch him up with my webbing. Oh. Um, and see if I can save him just like I saved Sabrina. Uh, let's make uh, it. And also, yeah. Nigel's invisible hand was going to be like the hand that puts pressure on the wound. Was be the <laughs> hand. Uh, let's roll a quick for that. Uh, we're going to make this difficult. Um, yes, he did just take a shot. Uh, meanwhile, meanwhile, you can see the gnomes are pulling guns out and they're pointing them at Yidus. Yidus, make a quick test as they start firing in your direction. Uh, we'll yeah. Co- <laughs> All right. So I got a 10. <laughs> okay. So you do manage to quickly create a bandage that prevents Bleedus from, from bleeding out. However, I'll say that you are smart enough to realize that if Bleedus doesn't get some proper medical attention in soon, he will not make it. And honestly, the only person who's ever really lent any kind of medical attention to you all was Sabrina. So you have extra motivation for trying to resurrect her. 
Uh, how did uh, how did Yidis do uh, on this quick I got test? A seven total. Okay, we're gonna say you go and uh, you're dodging around, and suddenly the gunfire starts happening uh, as you're just getting getting fired at by these gunslinging gnomes. Uh, the ground is erupting. You can see a few of the bullets hit the guy that you just finished stabbing. One of them nicks you, uh, and we'll, and you just hear this like. Bruh! As Yidis gets, tries to scramble away and behind what looks like just a st- you know stack of crates that you guys were hiding around before, but they're chasing after Yidis down the alleyway. Nigel, what are you up to? Uh, so Nigel had kind of invisible hand was sort of like holding there until like Splat wrapped up this bullet wound. Um, so Nigel is trying to hover in some sort of window or opening or eve or something to try to look inside and see. Um, Because I imagine we've seen people put like a key in a door and that kind of stuff. Sure. I mean, the door is kind of, it's like a saloon type of door swinging back and forth. So you might be able to just kind of push your way in. Okay. I will do that. All right. And you see exactly what I described to Splat before. There is no one, the gnomes aren't in here currently as they are chasing after Yidis, guns firing. Uh, And you do see that the man who I described to Splat as laying down in the bed is now standing up. He's leaning against the railing at this point, and you can see him kind of reaching around to the lock like he's trying to pick the lock with what looks like kind of a filed down fork or a spoon. And uh, and he looks up like, and you hear him, he's talking to you. And Invisible Hand is going to go over and knock the file down. Okay, uh, sure. And so... And uh, let's go 50-50, see if it... Yeah, it's going to scatter away from him. And he looks down like... And he's like motioning, trying to get like Nigel like Mm -hmm. to him. And Nigel will... Can Nigel fit between the bars? Uh, We'll say you can kind of compress because like owls are very like... you can They can kind of squish down. And then once I get through, uh, I want to see if I can kind of get big and like pin this guy against the wall. He's very big. Uh, he is yeah. he is Jeremy and Chuck big. He is <laughs> uh, he is like six foot four, somewhere in the neighborhood of three four hundred pounds. That's I assume that's how much Chuck and Jeremy weigh. I don't really know. Maybe uh, <laughs> the big bones. Uh, but he's very, very big. I don't think you'd be able to pin him back, but you can do something if you would like. I don't know if you'd be able to pin him, though. You might be able to harass him and poke him and stab him and stuff. That's fine. Okay. Um, see if I can get his attention to see if maybe Splat can come in and do his uh, poison sleepy thingy. Okay. Splat is tending to uh, is tending to, to bleed us currently. So, so Nigel's kind of on her own little mission. Uh, how do I get eyes out of a dude that is awake? Um, I will try to get his attention so that, uh, invisible hand can try to stab him. Okay. Uh, clever. If you're just trying to distract him, just making noises or something. Uh, thank you. Griffin just threw out some rerolls. That's very nice. Woohoo. All right, that <laughs> I rolled a lolly plus a three, so that's a thirteen. Okay, so it's, you, you can see you're you're distracting him, but not in a way. It's like you can hear him just his face is getting all angry, and and for us we hear it like bird, shut up, just shut your stupid mouth before I shove your freaking face into a damn blender and what? Oh, 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 what the hell? Where did this knife come from? Why is it stabbing me? <laughs> Uh, that is what you hear coming through the door, Bleedus, as you're laying there. Bleedus, uh, you are not dead, but we'll say you are going to die if they cannot, if you guys cannot save uh, Sabrina. If this resurrection ritual that you think is is true, uh, you're you're in, in in pretty pretty rough shape. So, what is Bleedus doing? You feel a little like you feel the pressure. You you see that that splat is helping you, but what does Bleedus do? Well, me mm-hmm. not dying. 
you can you can kind of like do something a little bit if you like. You can kind of start cl- you know clamber Come away on, or whatever. Stay with us. I think about it. I really will. Uh, I'm gonna yeah definitely start crawling inside this place. Okay, so you start crawling in, and you look yeah. up and you can see that inside the cell, uh, Nigel is flapping around, hoo hoo and like crazy. Uh, hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo hoo, hoo <laughs> over and over and over again, and the knife is just <laughs> stabbing away. The guy is huge though, so it's it's probably not enough. Uh, but you can see they're still inside the cell. So as you're kind of like kind of dragging yourself in here and there, you can feel your guts. You're leaving a blood, you know, blood Ugh. trail behind. What do you like to do? I'm going to call out to this man and what little human I can muster. I'm going to say, it's fine. I know that, Al. It hates hands. Put your hands outside the bars. It'll claw out the cell. It won't get you anymore. <laughs> Roll a clever test. <laughs> I don't even know I understood what you just said. <laughs> it's a 10. I just told him to stick his hands out the bars. Like, who's saying that I can't say, okay, okay, okay. Who's ever saying that? Is that a go? Uh, and uh, then um, Lat will take opportunity of that. Yeah, absolutely. He's going to tie his hands to the bars with the <laughs> okay. with, with Dude. some silk. Give me a quick test to see if you could do this fast enough before he notices. Uh, nice, nice. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I got a nine. Oh, that's nice. beautiful. And so quick. Uh, <laughs> Norse Foundry dice are really Hey, man. Good. Norse Foundry. Good friends. Uh, you know, you can go to their site and you can use uh, you can use the promo code Lolly uh, to get uh, 10% oh, off the order. Oh, look at that. Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. I've got some too. You can't get the Lolly dice yet, but they're going to happen at some point. Don't worry. We're going to get you them. All right. Nice. So uh, you've now bound. He, he's still kind of getting cut and stabbed here and there with the knife. His 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 his, arm, his hands are bound. Like what's ha- what's happening here? Was that goat talking? Why is there a goat talking? Oh my god, that's fine. Ah, I stop stabbing me. God damn it, Al, stop stabbing me. Uh, so how do you guys want to finish this guy off? Uh. I mean, if we're just describing how we finish. Yeah, just off. describe it. At this point, I feel like you guys have earned it. So just describe how you take him down. Uh, I'll like start. I'll set my front legs up like casting light and trying to hypnotize him. And then as he starts following it with his eyes, I want to blind what? him. What? Ah, why can't I say that? God damn, this has been the worst freaking day. Ah. Uh, and then Bleedus or Nigel, do you do anything? I'm just going to lay here bleeding out. <laughs> okay. Enjoying Nigel, the show. Nigel's going to say, tell him he shouldn't have killed her. Tell him he shouldn't have killed her and this wouldn't be happening to him. Hey, you remember Sabrina? No, should I? Uh, our, our friend in the cottage, the witch in the woods. Sorry, I know a lot of witches in a lot of woods. Be you hung her this morning. I hung a lot of witches in a lot of woods this morning. Can you be more specific? It's all right. You're going to be seeing her soon here anyway. How is she going to come hell? Ow, stop stabbing me. Ugh. And at that point, I'm going to say he slumps from the million stab wounds. <laughs> and you can see his arms kind of like wrench really strangely and like you can feel the bo- you can see the bones kind of break in his wrists as his hands are still bound uh and he is dead and i'll assume that you guys can you guys can harvest the eyes no no she's there yeah while this Scoop all out. yeah no problem while this all was happening however two gnomes were chasing after yetus on the streets of this ridiculous <laughs> village so what's your plan here yetus to get away from these things or deal with them however you want I have a very good plan because I am a smart dog. Good boy. I can go underneath these houses because they have the raised spaces and gnomes are small enough that they will try to follow me there. So I am going to dive under the house because I might be able to get through it quicker than they can. And while they are crawling under the house, I will turn around quickly and light it on fire. <laughs> okay. Well, you you said quick a couple times, so we'll make it a quick test. Uh, this is pretty... This is going to be tricky because they are small yeah. and they are fast. Uh, I, I will know. make this difficult. We do have some rerolls left in the uh, 
in the chat, okay. thanks to Griffin. So this will make it a nine difficulty. I might use one of those. I mean, you can okay. roll. You can roll first. Can and then just, just make I it rolled a six and okay. got a seven total. So okay. I need a better roll. All right. Oh, yeah. Nine plus one for a ten. Beautiful. You dive underneath. You feel pain because uh, you did kind of mm. get, you know, you you do. You are not as like terrible a shot as, as Bleedus took, but you did get nicked and you're sliding across and you hear more gunfire going off and their voices are chasing after and like you watch you look behind they're crawling underneath fire 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 and you hop out and hey you fire back as you start setting this entire uh, building ablaze and you just hear them going like ah! no 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 and as you're running away Obviously, Yidus doesn't look at this as you're running back, but the rest of us see the fire just begin to collapse the building, and we hear the terrible screams of the gnomes that are trapped beneath the, the building. <laughs> it's at that point, uh, we'll say that the rest of you come out of the sheriff's office. Bleedus is, is in really bad shape. Yidus is not in great shape. The Splat and Nigel, you're doing okay, and you have the eyes of the now dead witch hunter. There still is a village worth of nonsense gnomes trying to fulfill prophecies that make no particular sense, and there's possibly the horse out in the woods that you still might have to contend with. Then there's the ritual. How do you guys want to escape the village? This village has got a, a fence, right? Yeah, there's a little wall, like a wooden wall around it. Why don't we just try and... Oh, no, I'm in terrible shape. I would say we'll just climb up on a building and leap over. But if I do that, everything that got tucked back inside might fall right on out. Well, I think we caused a lot of distraction. And people went chasing after us. The horse might still be attached to the wagon. Maybe we double back. You ride on my back, Letus. And I will take you to that wagon. And then Nigel can drive the wagon. I like that idea. I, so, seeing as how Bledis is going to be on Edis, I don't want to add too much weight myself. Nigel's all right if I walk right on you. Nigel? Can you, will you uh, let a spider ride on you? Yeah, yeah, I've got an idea for you. And you'll, under your legs, you'll just feel that you're suddenly being like, supported and so you're Ooh, just like floating nice. on his land okay <laughs> so it's oh. almost like this yeah you're just like in you're riding like sidecar to her as your guys are flying up <laughs> <laughs> put on a tiny little little helmet with huge goggles because nice. you guys yeah so there's there's one bakery that's on fire there's another building that's on fire there's a couple dead people in the middle of the street uh, there's some kind of chaos going on around the center square where a bunch of lanterns were dropped down and tangled and that kind of started these little fires. So definitely there's some chaos going on. It's not that the streets are empty, but the streets are chaotic and maybe they don't necessarily notice as you all are sneaking and sneaking and sneaking back. I will say, let's get one, let's just get one sly roll to see, uh, to make sure nothing bad happens. Uh, I'll say because... Because Nigel can fly up and out of the way and the spider's kind of small. You guys are okay. You can stay out of sight. But I'll, let's get one from, from Yidus since he is carrying Bleedus on his back. Let's get a sly roll from, from that to see if you can make it back <laughs> to the wagon. It's a sly zero character. Hey, I am not a very sly character. <laughs> but we've got re-rolls. Right. I would like to use a re-roll. <laughs> can you re-roll if something is below your Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. It's just... It's just yeah. It would have been below my day. It's just audience dice. It's fine. Okay. Yeah, we're not. We're just having Ooh, fun. Eight. That'll do. I'll take it. You can see that there are there are gnome guards that are still around the front. And you can see that no one really has done anything with the wagon at this point. But there's a lot of chaos going on. And there's not as many people towards the towards the front as there were before. As you can see that there is just fire everywhere. And it's now dark. Uh, as, as it was evening time when you arrived. So you can see the flames up in the sky here and there. You can smell the, the smoke on your nose. And you're able to kind of just hop on to the wagon at this point. And who was, it, who was driving away? Nigel. Nigel, you use your invisible hand as splat. You drop down into the seat. Visible hand suddenly grabs the reins and starts wheeling this, uh, this domesticated horse back out onto the the cobblestone road 
And it's a it's a it's it's a few moments before bleed as you hear like, hey, where'd that wagon go? Where I don't know where where, where the hell it go? As there you could hear behind, but no one seemed to be chasing uh, as more and more fires begin to spread in the village. We'll say you're on you're in the wagon, you're on the cobblestone path. Uh, you you guys kind of know your way back, but you know the road's a little bit a little bit strange. So it takes you guys a while. But eventually you do return. Uh, the body of, of Sabrina still torn in two, torn asunder. She does have this web kind of wrapping around her, kind of keeping her in place. Uh, you, you return. We'll say it's very, very dark at night. Walk me through. You guys have it just, just at the closest down. What does the ritual actually look like to resurrect her and how the hell do these guys, this guy's eyes come into play? Just walk me through how it works. And if it sounds interesting enough, we'll say it works. If it doesn't, well, it doesn't work. So let's hear it. Got an idea. She obviously kept all of us for a very specific reason. So we need the holy light of, you know, or of splat lighting her up from the inside. We need the fire of Yetus warming her up. We need Nigel's ghost hands placing the eyeballs on her eyeballs. And we need my ability to speak human words to say the magic words from the papers on her desk. Don't don't forget. Yeah. You see, you need to be able to see beyond the pale in order to bring someone back. That's why we have got the dead man's eyes yes that is it exactly yes you are very smart or i'm just really good at pulling stuff out of my goat ass whenever i need to one of those two it that is also true. Today. it's actually work tonight yeah for sure <laughs> you can poop on command mm -hmm. i can that's my secret tony i can always poop or is it cap I don't remember which one Bruce said that to. All right, so I've, I've, I've got the eyes right here. So pop them in. You where where are you putting the eyes? She needs the eyes to see her way back. So you're gonna are you gonna like replace her eyes with his? Is that what you're doing? Is that is that what you said, Bleatus? I just said set them on top. Okay, she just oh, okay. Yeah. Set the you set the eyes kind of on top of her eyes as she's kind of looking up. Uh, you start citing the words, reading the words. Mm -hmm. Before we hear what those words are, uh, what is Splat doing? Uh, Splat is uh, making sure there's plenty of light for the eyes to see. Okay, so you just start weaving some uh, of your uh, some of your sh and I then get, lighting them up. Yeah, I get in between on her nose bridge and I extend my two little arms out and okay. like I'm kind of, you know, guiding her in much like a, <laughs> okay. like a guy on an aircraft, you know, with a right. plane light kind of comes up. And then yeah. what is Yetus doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to do what Belita said and I'm going to breathe fire on the whole damn thing. <laughs> Just, and, just to keep her warm, not to burn yeah. her. Just to keep her warm. And you're oh, just okay. You're just like occasionally just just throwing out a little, or not like it's like a, not a constant blaze, but occasionally just like whoosh, whoosh. okay. Just tiny burps. As the ritual progresses, how does bleed is finished off? What are the magical words mm -hmm. that were written on her papers? Yeah, I got it right here. Oh, great, Sabrina, come back. Any kind of fool could see there was something and everything about you. Sabrina, come back. You can blame it all on me. And I was wrong. And I just can't live without you. Those at, are the magic words. As the light grows brighter, eventually it dims. <laughs> you see Sabrina's body stir and suddenly... She starts to move. The eyes fall off. She sits up. She kind of looks around at you all. Well, damn. Oh, jeez. Bladis, 
What the hell did you do? We brought you back from the dead. No. Oh. Well, all right. And she goes to get up, and like the legs kind of like stitch a little bit to the web. Well, someone help me up. Come on. And so and the invisible hand will extend and come under. And so she, Sabrina's hand. You stand up, Sabrina, and she's kind of stretching a little bit here and there. And she leads you back inside, and all four of the familiars follow. And that's where we'll end for tonight. Yeah. Okay. It's peach cobbler. Happy ending. Oh, of course she. Pe- yeah, there's <laughs> definitely peach cobbler. Now I want some freaking peach cobbler. Yay! You're welcome. <laughs> we did it. You did it. The witch is not dead anymore. So look at that. Okay. Uh, the good guys cute. won. <laughs> we did. It was no <laughs> so stupid. All right. So that was uh, this is a whole mess load of nonsense from Ruin, Rook and Decker. They do a lot of one page games, one pagers. This is one of them. This kind of just caught my eye. I have a couple others we might do at some point, but this one, I don't know, it looked kind of fun. And we had talked a few times about Bleedus and Yidus actually being characters. And mm-hmm. so this seemed like the perfect opportunity. And I and Melissa bringing in Nigel actually worked really well, too. Mm-hmm. Uh, so it's just a fun f- bunch of call outs, uh, which is great. Uh, so why don't we go ahead and do some closing plugs and we'll get on out of here. Adam, what's going on with Grim Perilous, man? Uh, well, uh, just kind of the same as usual, except for one thing, actually, now that I said that part out loud. Um, yeah, so we've got, uh, we just showcased one of the professions from the upcoming radiator, radiator uh, supplement that we're creating. Uh, we just received back our first piece of art from Dan Mandich, who will be doing the interior. And so depending on what level you pledge at, you'll get to see the Petrol Priest, one of the magic casters in Radiator, our post-apocalyptic supplement. Um, so yeah, come on by uh, Grim and Paral- uh, come on by patreon.com slash Grim and Perilous. Uh, and if you want to pledge, you'll get to see what that's all about. Awesome. Fantastic. Uh, Jeremy, I skipped over you. you. You had a Patreon you want to tell us about as well. What, what, tell us about it. Sure, and race on Patreon, comics, maps, tokens, fun stuff. Check it out. Perfect. And then Chuck, tell us about DOK. What do you got going on this week? Uh, yeah, on Wednesday, we're doing Dungeon Crawl Classics, playing the second uh, second edition adventure night below. Uh, Friday, we are continuing the campaign of the game that Joe is making called Anvia. And that's it, I think, for this week. I think so. Yeah, because Saturday is not the stream. So, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Uh, as for us here, next stream's tomorrow. Come back tomorrow night. Uh, Steven's going to run us through some more Forbidden Lands. We're closing in the end on that campaign. So, we'll see. Uh, I think we still have a couple episodes left, but uh, we're getting closer. So, uh, come hang out with us then. Uh, Thursday, you can catch uh, Jeremy, myself, and Melissa as we're playing some Die, the role playing game. Uh, I am going to force feed them or force them into a sludge factory that is. That is sort of metaphorically their their high school from when they were teens. Uh, so that'd be kind of fun. Uh, Friday, we are back to Conan the, from the 2D20 system. Uh, Aaron's going to be running that for us. And Saturday, we've got our usual one ring. Uh, as uh, as we are in Angmar, we are doing some stuff. We ended on a crazy cliffhanger uh, last week. And we'll see how that sort of uh, unfolds. Uh, as for here on Monday, we're going to be doing, you know, just some one shots and fun things for a couple weeks. Eventually we will dig into something a little bit more, but in between some of these longer games, we're going to do a couple fun things here and there and we'll sort out exactly what game, uh, we might end up sinking our teeth into for a little bit longer, uh, soon. Uh, anyway, thanks for hanging out. Thanks for watching. Uh, thanks for throwing out some bits. I saw some bits from Griffin and from cat really do appreciate it. Uh, and, uh, we're going to go ahead and rate somebody. Insomnia Night RPG. Every time I go over there, something weird happens with gifts and things. So this should be this should be a trip. So follow the raid. Uh, follow all of our channels. Or maybe maybe they're done. Maybe I won't be raiding them. Sorry, I just got some weird. Okay, I guess we're doing Lost Caravan RPG. So follow. Okay, I can't raid anyone right now. Something seems to be <laughs> wrong. I keep getting these weird messages that I can't raid anybody. Oh. So let's see. I'll try one more time. Who we got? Let's try this again. There we go. It's working this time. Uh, Follow the raid. We'll catch you all later. Have a good rest of your week. Come back tomorrow and later in the week. Bye-bye.